In this lesson, we want to look at the four main ways that we treat risk. It's called risk treatment. It's also called risk handling. It's also called your risk appetite. Uh, all these words can kind of be used interchangeably. It's basically the way that your organization is going to deal with risk and realize that as an organization, we don't deal with all risks the same. So we could actually take all four of these forms and apply them to different risks, different vulnerabilities, different threat agents, and the like. So realize that. Now, the first method that we use to treat risk is to avoid the risk, or it's called risk avoidance. And this involves just not taking the action, not engaging in the activity that actually leads to the residual risk. So uh, purging any threats, any activities, uh, not going through any types of processes that would introduce new risks. So we avoid it altogether. So the goal is trying to entirely circumvent the introduction of a threat actor or a threat agent. So for example, we might decide uh, to not process our own credit cards, okay? Maybe we decide that we're gonna go through a broker for all of our credit card transactions like PayPal. Or let's say that we're not even gonna sell any products online, okay? Our services will not be provided online. We're just gonna be, you know, brick and mortar, okay? We wanna avoid those risks of the internet by just being a brick and mortar organization. So as you can see, we can undertake certain activities uh, that allow us to avoid risk. Also think about this, a hospital or a small medical practice may avoid certain processes. They may, uh, you know, not offer certain types of things to their, uh, to their clients, okay, to their patients, because it may make them sub subjectable or make them more vulnerable to HIPAA or, you know, high tech. There we go. Uh, to HIPAA legislature or HIPAA governance. So a medical facility not dealing with certain types of activities. So one way to have a risk appetite or risk uh, method of handling risk is risk avoidance. Another method is to transfer the risk, okay? Transferring risk means you're just gonna offload whatever residual risk you have, you're gonna offload that risk onto some other entity. Uh, two of the most common ways that we transfer risk uh, in kind of our modern environments would one be through outsourcing, even though it's, argu it's an arguable thing that outsourcing in some ways may actually introduce new risks. Okay, but you can engage, let's say, in a managed security service provider, an MSSP or a cloud service provider, you could outsource certain activities and because they are going to you know, maintain the infrastructure, maintain the platform, maintain the services, you're outsourcing the risk, you're transferring the risk through outsourcing. Another way to transfer risk is through insurance, so specifically, you know, cyber insurance. And that could be either getting, you know, a separate endorsement, usually it is a separate endorsement on your existing, you know, uh, liability, corporate liability policy, or you could have, you know, an entire separate line of insurance, of cyber insurance. So there's a couple of ways to handle risk, to deal with risk, avoiding risk, and transferring risk. Our next two forms of risk handling or risk treatment are to mitigate risk or accept the risk. Uh, mit mitigation is really called risk reduction, okay? These are the controls that you put in place as countermeasures, okay? Your administrative controls, your technical controls, your physical controls, also the other types like preventive, okay? Those types of things. So the controls we put in place are what we use to, to mitigate risk. And, and since we, we at Brio practice the open fair, we can also talk about mitigating risk as increasing difficulty, okay? Increasing difficulty or increasing resistance to reduce vulnerability, okay? V-U-L-N. So mitigating risk. And the, so the things that we, ha the risk that we have up to the point where we put our controls in place. Mitigation, we call that inherent risk. 
Okay. That's the risk that we have and up until we put in our adequate controls, our mitigation, okay, mitigating risk. Let's say we decide to not do any more controls, okay? At that point, we're accepting risk, okay? We're accepting risk at that point. And risk acceptance is the assumption of risk. Often it comes down to this. We've done a cost-benefit analysis, and we realize that the amount of time and resources and money that we would have to spend to protect an asset is worth more than the value of the asset, okay? It's like we say in Texas, you don't put a $100 fence around a $10 horse, okay? You get the idea. So we're accepting the risk, and the acceptable risk that we have left over is what we refer to as residual residual risk, okay? So there you go. Those are the four forms of risk treatment or risk handling, or it's also referred to as risk appetite.